Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to the Team America rally. <laughs> so, and uh, I'll be too. Um. <laughs> it's, it's, all right, so uh, let's see. Um, what should I say? SpaceX does rock. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Um, actually, I'm, I, I'm pretty excited about the possibility of uh, SpaceX, uh, you know, and, and just generally becoming a spacefaring civilization, uh, going beyond where we went in the past with the, where we went to the moon. It's, it's crazy that we went to the moon uh, over 50 years ago was the last time uh, any, anyone went to, to the moon. And uh, a lot of people think we, we didn't go to the moon, but we did. We did. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, the Soviets would have called us out on that one if uh, we hadn't gone to the moon. They would be like, they would have called, they would have called bullshit on that one, a hundred percent. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, we need to go back to we. Need, we should not just go back to the moon. We, we should have a moon base, you know, like moon base alpha, you know, like an actual base with like a science station. That'd be sick, you know, and uh, and, and like. And, and I, I, th I think we want to become a multi-planet species and be out there among the stars. And we want to make Starfleet real, you know? So that like, I mean like, 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 you should be able to go to Mars if you want to go to, I mean, go to Mars. It'd be like, amazing, you know? Well, it'll take, it'll take six months. <laughs> so, Mars is far, um, but we can do it. We can create a base on Mars that, and, and ultimately build a city on Mars and make life multi-planetary. I think that would be super cool. Um, yeah, I mean. I mean, the, you know, life can't just be about like, you know, solving one miserable problem after another. There have to be things that inspire you, that excite you about the future, that you look forward to, you're like, wow, that's gonna be cool. And I think being a space-faring civilization and, and, you know, having a city on Mars and going out there exploring the, the moons of Jupiter, ultimately getting to other star systems would be incredibly exciting. And something you could like, wow, look, you could really look forward to that. That'd be like, I don't know, incredible. So you know, go out there and find like maybe alien civilizations, um, you know, like in Star Trek, you know, go, go where you've never gone before. Um, so yeah, let's make Starfleet real. Um, yeah. You know, meanwhile, back here on Earth, um, <laughs> we, uh, we, we, we need to, um, I think we need, we, do, we definitely need to get uh, President Trump reelected. That is, <laughs> that is, so, uh, that, that, is, that is, I think, uh, in, in, incredibly important. Um, and, um, I mean, I think we, we, we don't, I think America is great, but we want to be, we want to be greater. Um, and we want to do, we want to do, we want to do amazing things. Um, and we, we don't want, uh, the, you know, like the Apollo program to be our high water mark. We, we want to, you know, do great things in America. And, and I think we also want to uh, preserve what has made America great. Um, you know, so, you know, th things like uh, freedom of speech, uh, th uh, th you know, the, like, you know, the, the rights to bear arms, these things in the Constitution that are actually, you know, imp important. Uh, you have to say, why did, they, why, did they, why did they add these amendments to the Constitution? It was because in, in the places that people ca uh, came from, uh, if you said what you want to say, you'd be uh, put in prison or, or you'd be killed. Um, and, and, uh, and, and they took everyone's guns away so that you know, they couldn't rebel against oppressive government. That's the whole, that's the whole idea behind taking the guns away. So, um, so I'm, I'm a big believer in the Constitution, um, big believer in um, you know, uh, what, what makes America great. Um, and, and then we, we also need like, some obvious things, like we, we need actual secure borders. Um, you know. It's like, you, you know, you, you, like, you're, you're not a country if you don't have, like, a border. Like, it's just, like, what does it even mean to be a country at that point, you know? Um, and, I, and I went to the border just to see for myself what it was like, and it was like, it's like World War Z at the border. You know, like, this is crazy, man. Um, so, obviously, I'm, you know, in favor of, 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 of immigrants that... So, you know, the, the, the insane government spending is, is driving the country into bankruptcy. Um, and, uh, you know, just like a person, if you spend too much, you know, eventually you go bankrupt. The, the, the federal debt's growing by a trillion dollars every three months. Um, I mean, it's, I mean our, our defense budget is pretty gigantic. It's a trillion dollars. 
but our, the, the interest that, that we owe on the debt is now higher than the defense budget, over a trillion dollars and growing. This is not sustainable. So we have to do something about that or the country's going to go bankrupt. So that, that's an essential thing too. The, it, yeah, so that's why we need the Department of Government Efficiency. <laughs> D-O-G-E. That's on, an, on, a, on a brass plaque on a desk. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's yeah, like, yeah, exactly. As, uh, as people were saying, it's just like it's, like it's common sense stuff. And, you know, um, you know it, it, it was, it, America really just needs, it needs to remain the land of, of, of opportunity, the land where, where you know, your, your success is a function of, of, of how hard you work and, and you, uh, your talent. Like, if you're talented and hardworking, that should be the only thing that determines whether you are successful. That's it. You know? And America is also supposed to be the land of freedom. That means personal freedom. Like, the government should not be imposing all, all these rules on, 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 on people. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's like, it, you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, gov government overreach is, is, is not, not cool. Um, freedom, freedom, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Twitter files, I mean, it was just nutty, you know. Uh, people don't realize just how much uh, uh, you know, government involvement there is in, in the media and, like, how much the government influences the media. Um, I mean, it, it's crazy how, you know, you'll see, like, when, when that, like in fact, I, I, I think, like, whoever's manipulating the media should mix it up a bit because they're really not doing a great job. <laughs> um, like, you know, when, when they, was a week before, the debate uh, with between Biden and Trump, and it, it, like the, everyone was on the media was saying Biden was sharp as attack, sharp as attack, sharp as attack, sharp as attack, sharp as attack. I mean, like, like you should mix it up a little. Get a thesaurus. Um, okay. <laughs> the, the NBC media puppets were, were just like, all saying exactly the same thing. So, um, you know, it's just it's just kind of strange. That, and like, do they all just get the same memo at the same time? I don't know, where does it come in? Is on the, I want to see the group text, okay? <laughs> like, is, is there like an email copy list or what? You know, everyone say the, the same thing at the same time. Um, yeah, just total puppets. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, totally. So, well, let's see, like, I, you know, what, what I think, what I find is, is really engaging is when people are able to uh, ask questions or make comments, and so, uh, if, you, if anybody wants to, uh, you know, try, try to keep try to keep the comments like reasonably short. Uh, if, any any monologue should be ideally kept to you know less than a minute. Um, um, so, we're, we're just far you know, far far away, and I'll I'll try to answer questions and you know respond to comments and. <laughs> well, yeah, sure. <laughs> so, hi. Uh, my question is, what makes you so interested in politics now? Why is this so important? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, okay, don't bring the mic that close. <laughs> Whoa. Um, yeah, the question is, why, why politics now and, and versus in, in the past, I really have not been meaningfully involved in politics. So the reason is that I think we're at a crossroads. This time, I think we're at, we're at a crossroads, um, a fork in the road of, of destiny. Um, I mean, what I see happening under the sort of Biden and Kamala administration is uh, a level of sort of government overreach and manipulation that that is extremely troubling, um, and and I also see uh, really uh, a deliberate attempt to import as many people as possible into swing states like Pennsylvania in order to ensure that there is a permanent one state uh, a per, a per, that America becomes a permanent one-party state. If you, I mean, the numbers are, are truly staggering, and the sort of sort of fake legacy media doesn't report on them. Um, the only reason anyone knows about it is if, if you're on the X platform. But like the, it, it's it's not it's crazy. But I mean, I mean, you're seeing like basically uh, in increases. This is from the government website, by the way, which is run by Democrats. So. Like you're seeing, like uh, in some cases, like 700 percent increases in the past three and a half years uh, in, in uh, illegals in swing states 
What a coincidence. Um, and when you're talking about elections that are won or lost by 10 or 20,000 votes, and then you, you, you bring in 200,000 uh, people, and then you uh, put them on the fast track to citizenship, this is without, it, without considering any cheating. Um, this is legalized. Um, that if, 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 that, if, that is, if that happens over the next four years, there will be no swing states. Um, the, 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 um, they're importing voters. That is my, I think that's obvious to anyone who looks. And we will have a situation like we have in California where it's, it's, it's a one party state. California is, is a super majority Dem state. Um, and so it's, it's one party rule. And if you have one party rule, that's not a democracy. So I, I think either action is taken now. If, 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 if there was another four years uh, for, and it's, it's really like pointless to even sort of talk about Kamala, because Kamala is just a puppet of a larger machine. If, if, the, if, the, if the machine, I'll just call it the machine, is, is able to, sit, to run for another four years, um, there, there, there will not be any, any meaningful elections in the future, just like there aren't in California. And, and, and the Hulk, the Hulk, all of America will be Californicated. Uh, not in a good way. Yeah, Californicated. Ouch. Um, so we don't want, that, that would be a bad situation. In fact, it, 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 will, it will actually be worse than California. The reason it will be worse than California is the one thing that holds California back from being even worse than it is is that people can move out of California and still be in America. Now what happens when you, there's no place to move? It'll, it'll be way worse than California. That's why I think, yeah, exactly. Well, and, and speaking of, of Mars, like the, the, what, what we're seeing you know, with, with SpaceX, uh, Tesla, and whatnot, is that, the, that, that the, the, the sort of regulatory oppression year after year is worse and worse. And there's more regulatory agencies created every year, more rules and regulations every year, until eventually everything is illegal. You know, we, we had our rockets sitting on the pad for two months, ready to fly. Um, how is it possible that uh, SpaceX could build a gigantic rocket faster than the government could move paper from one desk to another? So this is... So if, 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 if that trend continues, which, which it will do, unless there's a conscious effort to um, have, to have deregulation and have sensible regulation, then Mars will be impossible. We will, we will be forever confined to Earth. So, you know, that's a, that. I, I definitely think that's that's a, a major so showstopper. Um, is is being so so heavily regulated that we are confined to Earth forever. Um, and that would be a sad eulogy if, if, they, if future aliens see us. You come back and they almost made it. Too bad they regulated themselves. Uh, you know. And this, they, they had the rocket and everything, you know. So, so, you know, so I, I guess you know, this, you know, the short, short answer is I think this is this is incredibly important. That, uh, ironically, you know, there's a, a lot of people on the Dem side that, that call Trump a threat to democracy. I, I think, in fact, they are the threat to democracy. Thank you. Hi, Elon. I want to thank you for coming. Um, I'm from Deep Blue, Northeast Philadelphia. And I just want to say thank you for all you've been doing, your contributions. And my question is, did you expect the impact that buying X would have on the world and the United States, free speech, even into the America PAC movement? Um, yeah, well, I mean, the, the reason... I, I didn't realize it would have as big of an impact as, as it has come to have. Um, but the, the reason I felt that it was important to acquire Twitter was because I, I, could, I could really, I could feel the walls closing in. Um, you know, it was outrageous that they, that they uh, suspended the account of a sitting president. You know, I, I mean, that's, that's insane. Um, and I think it was only a matter of time before they suspended my account, frankly. You know, and I, for sure, given the stuff I've said lately, they would have suspended me six ways a Sunday. Um, so, you know, I mean, it, it, really, Twitter and, 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 and well, well, pretty much all the social media companies and Google and everyone are controlled by far-left activists. That, this is, that's the truth of it, you know? And so then, how do you, well, how do you know what's real uh, when it's all filtered through a far-left San Francisco Berkeley lens? You know, they, they just manipulate the truth constantly. Um, you can't even find the truth if you Google it, because Google's, you know, put it on page six. And I, I mean, 
you know, I don't want to pick on Google too much. I mean, I have a lot of friends there, but uh, you know, it's it's very easy to uh, tweak the results because you know, like the, the you know the joke goes like, what's the best place to hide a dead body? Well, second place are Google search results because nobody ever goes there. <laughs> so you don't really have to in in order to um, you know hide information, you don't have to delete it. You just move it to the second page, and it's just people don't go there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that'd be tough. I <laughs> that's a that's a tricky one. Um, but hey, at least there's, 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 one, there's one place where you can find out what's, what's actually going on, what's real, and that's the X platform. Yeah. And, and, and I want to say, like, you know, we, we, we're very rigorous at, on the X platform about being a fair playing field, a level playing field, being fair to all sides. There's not a single uh, account on the left that's been suppressed, not one. No suspensions, nothing. I believe in being fair. Um, you know, and once in a while we do, we do get like a request for something on the right that's, you know, we, we sh would be slightly censorious, and we're like, nope, we, 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 we're not gonna do that. So, you know, we're, we're rigorous about being fair. Unlike, unlike the prior regime, uh, we, we, we are actually fair. Um, and we, we want both sides to say their piece and, and to th let there be a free debate and let, and let the marketplace of ideas uh, you know, work and let, let the best ideas win. And, so, and that's the right thing to do. Hello, Elon. As an IT guy of 26 years, I think one of the smartest things you did was firing most of the Twitter staff. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's talking about corruption in the election systems, in the DOJ and judicial system. I personally think a lot of that is because of blackmail data stored on government servers. I've, I strongly feel that if we can't control the information that is stored by the three-letter agencies, we will never get control of the country. What are your ideas on things Trump can do to drain the swamp without being overwhelmed by their dirty tricks? Well, I, I mean, as the saying goes, sunlight is the best disinfectant. So I think, I think really just bringing, making as much information as possible public, available to the public, um, so that you can see what's going on. There's like, you know, so it's, I mean, I, I do have a top secret clearance, but I, I have to say like most of the stuff that I'm aware of a top secret, like the most, re the reason to keep it top secret is because it's so boring. Um, um, yeah, I mean, so, uh, but I, th I think like the, the, the strong bias with respect to government information should be um, to make it available to the public. Like it should be, let's, let's be as transparent as possible, like fully transparent, unless it's like, an, like a massive risk to the country, like it's like, you know, we, you know, we don't want to give ex like say exact instructions on how to make a nuclear bomb or something like that, you know. But, but unless there's a, a genuine risk to the country, all information in the government should be public. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Elon, over here. Oh, sorry. I, hey. <laughs> I know I look like the same girl who just asked Ian Hirschman. It's hard to tell because I just hear the speakers, so. Okay. I am uh, Denise's twin who just asked a question. I'm also from uh, Deep Blue, far northeast Philadelphia in Parkwood. What I would like to ask you is, uh, in applying the same efficiency that you did to removing 80% of the staff at Twitter to the Department of Governmental Efficiency, would you consider um, hiring Scott Pressler, who is an amazing yeah, sure. movement Absolutely. Um, for that efficiency? Yes. Um, and, and, I, and I should say, you know, it, hopefully if this comes to pass, then the Department of Government Efficiency is able to take action. Uh, we, we will reduce a, a lot of, head, we, a lot of head, government headcount, but we're, we're going to give, I think, like, like very long severances, like, I mean, like two years or something like that. So, look, just, just go do something else, is what we're going to say. <laughs> and you'll get paid for two years, you know. And so you got a lot of time to go and figure out something else to do. Um, you know, we're just, it's like the point is not to be cruel or, or to, you know, you know, have people not be able to pay their mortgage or anything. It's just we we got to move people. We just have too many people in the government sector, and they, and they, they could be more productive elsewhere. Hey, Elon. Yeah, it is a pleasure. Uh, me and my best friend started a company when we were 21 years old. We're going to be the next biggest beef jerky company in the U.S., I promise that. But what advice do you have for young entrepreneurs like us to conquer a challenge that seems almost impossible from the beginning? Well, I mean, generally, I think, you know, try, just try to make a, a good product or service. Um, and, uh, and, and, 
I mean, it's, 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 it's not, it's, it's really that, you know, it's like, it, you have to say, like, what is a useful thing that you could do? Like, maximize your usefulness. What is the, is, is the if there's, like, what, what is that product or service that you want to you make? Beef jerky. The best beef jerky. Okay, great. So you want to make the best beef jerky, just go ahead and do it. Um, and, and then, uh, you know, you have to sort of just explain to people why it's, well, first of all, you need to make sure it is, in fact, the best beef jerky. <laughs> Um, and then you need just to, need to then explain to people why it is. And so if you have both the reality and the perception of something being the best beef jerky or whatever the product may be, then I think you'll find it, it uh, will be very successful. Yeah. The company is Open Road Jerky. Check us out. All right. Sounds good. Hey there, Elon. Uh, my name is Josh. Um, I drove down from Luzerne County today, um, which, by the way, has flipped red by registration. So yes. Nice work, everybody there. Excellent. Yeah. Um, another fun fact about the northeast part of Pennsylvania. Um, July 3rd, 1778, the largest massacre that ever happened on American soil happened when the colonists, the French, and the natives all fought over that land. Um, and I think it all circles back. Um, it's now, you know, fracking central. There's a lot of resources there, land, um, and just beautiful local communities. Yeah. And something that is happening at a rate that is uh, in unconceivable, really inconceivable, the centralization of power to global elites and uh, far off abstracted yeah. places that we can't touch. Yeah. Um, what are the ways that we bring that back to local people that can actually have an impact on the ground? Um, speaking with some people here, yeah. do we... I totally agree. Do we, uh, just, do we move the departments around the United States so they're not all in D.C.? How do we get people on the ground empowered to actually make everyday, change, everyday changes in people's lives? Well, I, I super agree with you. So I, I, I'm against globalist power. Like, I don't think, I think we should, like, the UN should not have a lot of power. And these, like, these, like, you know. It's like, who voted for them? I, mean, I don't vote for them. You know, and, and it's, it's like, we, we want power to the people. Power, it, the, the power should, max, maximum power to the individual. Um, and so, like, you know, if, 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 if they're, like, we should not have any sort of international treaties that restrict the freedom of Americans, and we should minimize the, the amount of federal inter interference uh, at the state level. So it should be like, so unless, this, unless it's at the state level, which, which is something you can influence, then the, it really, uh, agencies at the federal and the national level should have minimal to zero power over you. Yeah. Is there a way that we could decentralize uh, data so that consumers own the data? What is the next step towards that? Because I feel like that is what actually gives us our sovereignty back. Well, I guess I'm not sure how to decentralize the data. Um, if, if the data is at least in multiple places, at least you should be able to like locally store the data. Uh, I, I mean, people, I think individuals should own, own their own data. You know, I think that's really important. Like, if you want to separate yourself from a social media company, you should be able to take everything with you. Um, so, I'm, I'm basically I'm in favor of any 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 action that maximizes your freedom and liberty. So, yeah. Hey, Elon, uh, Tesla shareholder owner since 2015. I own an S Plaid. Thank right. you for making that thing because it's awesome. It's it my is fun. daily driver. It's so yeah. much fun. Uh, my but my heart is is with SpaceX. And so my question is, how will you, with Trump, be able to deregulate so that we can get more launches and get to Mars? Well, absolutely. That, that's, that is a, big, a major factor for supporting um, President Trump, is that um, it, you know, if, if, we, if, the, if the sort of you know, Kamala puppet machine um, hap happens, it's, it's going to be just more and more regulations. Um, and and this, this over you know, slow strangulation by overregulation will continue. Um, and, but, but Trump is very enthusiastic about deregulation, just, which is not to say we don't want any regulation, we just want sensible regulation. Um, and I think if, if uh, President Trump is elected, we, we can actually take those actions and we can, um, we, we can cut, cut the strings. Like, I, I feel like America is like, like Gulliver, you know, tied down by a million little strings. And, and we need to cut those strings and free the giant. <laughs> Hey, man. Um, 
thank you so much for doing everything you're doing. Um, Welcome. Um, this is going to be a little long, but I think you're going to get a kick out of it. Okay. It's a sad story that turns into something funny you'll probably like. All right. Um, so I was mostly a lifelong liberal, sort of like yourself. Yeah. Work in digital production marketing stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, I believe in freedom. Like, I mean, yeah. I, I believe in, like, empathy. Like, you should care about your fellow human beings, you know, and, um, you know, and, and, and that... And, and, and I believe in, like, free speech, which used to be a thing on the left, and now, the, yeah. bizarrely, they want censorship. I'm like, what? Yeah. And, and thank you for buying Twitter and saving free speech. And Babylon B, too. Like, yeah. That's, that was great, man. Um, anyway, so I sort of have a case to plead to. Uh, sorry, a little long. Anyway, I can't get into the details because there are legal issues and stuff, but years ago I had my life destroyed by crazy woke people because I was injured. I lived in Los Angeles for about 13 years. Yep. And when I wanted to seek out, you know, like a court case and stuff, I had someone in the legal system look me straight in the face and tell me, you know, you're, you're not the right kind of white guy. This isn't going to play out well for you. And I immediately was like, what the... You know, yeah, what, the, what? What? That doesn't make any sense. I, I don't want to swear, but sure. Yeah. So, and I was like, "Is it because I'm from Pennsylvania, or I'm also Ashkenazi and like Jewish, or maybe both? I, I don't, I don't know." Yeah. But I was immediately like, "What is happening?" And so it put me in a bad spiral, and it like lost me. It just went crazy. So I was like, "What? Like I'm always been a egalitarian yeah. person, and right." I mean, racism in any form is bad, whether it doesn't matter who it's directed towards. Yeah, and so, um, and I started, you know, becoming more center-right instead of liberal, which is, you know, it's an identity crisis because, yeah, yeah, it's a big change. Sure. And working in an industry, it's sort of, like, you understand in our industries, it's, you feel like an outcast, and you don't really know who to talk to, and so it's awkward. So anyway, as a catharsis of sorts, um, I made this app called Pooper. Okay. And so it lets you put animated pooping animals on your text messages. <laughs> okay. And it's been charting for years, so like since I made it. It's, it sounds funny. Yeah. So I think you'd like it just because, you know, sticking pooping animals on like <laughs> Mark sure. Cuban's, if you're talking to him, you can like <laughs> yeah. stick it on his face or his text messages and stuff. Yeah. All right. And so he gets like a gorilla pooping on his text message. Yeah. So, I mean, I saw, I saw an interview with uh, Mark Cuban and... Um, What's her name again? Rachel Maddow. But I couldn't tell which was which. <laughs> so my question is, would you, like, I, because this destroyed me, I was really badly injured. I'm not saying you have to do it. I don't mean to put you on the spot. Would you consider implementing that kind of thing onto Twitter where you could, you know, use, have a dinosaur a monkey throwing poop and put it on top of <laughs> Mark Cuban's, you know, like, new stupid look that he has? Well, or, I, I, or I mean... a business insider. About, about probably five million people have now heard about the pooper. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe ten million. Uh, there's a lot of people who are going to watch this. So, uh... I think that's, uh, that's some solid pr publicity right there. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Thanks for coming. You're going to help us win Pennsylvania and the entire race. Yes. Well, I mean, I, I should say, like, like, like it's incredibly important uh, that um, everyone here and everyone listening, um, watching, uh, that you go and, and, and get make sure your friends, family, yourself uh, are registered to vote because the voting registration deadline in Pennsylvania uh, ends at midnight on Monday. So there's only a few days left. Um, and uh, so hound, you just got to be a pest and like, hound, your, hound everyone you know to make sure they're registered to vote and, and the registration is good um, because it's, it's a sort of, you know, a shot clock ends at uh, midnight on Monday. So, ha, go! <laughs> Now you're going to be the head of the Doge. Have you thought about whether AI and blockchain can be used to track every dollar that the government spends, makes people accountable to the very last person, and we know exactly who agreed to a $400 toilet seat? <laughs> yeah. Can we do that? Is that in the Actually, set that's of a good possibilities? Idea. That, 
No, that's a good idea because actually trying to make sense of these incredibly complex laws and re regulations where, you know, a law gets passed that's like longer than Lord of the Rings um, and no one's actually read the thing, like literally not, there's not actually one, one human who's read the whole, the whole law and then that law gets amplified by, you know, a hundred times by the regulations that, that follow. I think you, you, the only thing that could comprehend that is an AI, basically. So I think that would, that would actually be a good idea is like saying, okay, AI, just tell us what's actually going on, where, where, where is the money getting spent, what, is this, what does this law actually mean, and, um, and, and simplify it, really. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the, 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 the amount of government waste that happens is, tr is truly staggering. I mean, if you've, if you've been exposed to government contracting, it's, it's, it's pretty nutty. Um, it's like beyond, it's so, it's so crazy, it's, it's hard to believe. Um, so, yeah. Um, so it, it's, it, I think there's basically a lot of room for, for, for improvement there, and, and the net result will be a, a significant improvement in, in, like I said, in personal freedom and the standard of living in America. So. Hi, Mr. Musk. It is such an honor to be here with you. I am actually a former mainstream media journalist. I now teach uh, martial arts in the city of Philadelphia t uh, to kids and also in Camden. And I find that the character skills that they need, they get through martial arts, not so much through uh, the education they're getting. And with my journalism background... That's great. I, I, I did martial arts, too. It's, it's great. It, it is... It, it is, it, is, it is a very healthy thing for kids to do, I think, yeah. And adults, too. Yeah, I will spar you any time. <laughs> okay. um, um, my question is, I have such like a strong desire for truth that I feel like looking at X, but also coming to events like this yeah. is the only way that I can truly feel that I confidently know what you're saying and how you're saying it, which I appreciate. Yes. What do we do for kids so that when they get older, they can see through it because what they're learning now, I think, falls short of not just the character, but also their ability to discern their own opinion. Well, yeah, I, that's a good point. I, I think teaching, teaching kids critical thinking is very important. They should be taught critical thinking. It's, it's like a mental firewall. Uh, if you teach kids critical thinking at a young age um, and just you know, teach them the types of fallacies that they're likely to encounter, in the, the sort of forms of trickery, like you know, straw man fallacy or, you know, it, so there's, there's like the various you know, ways that, um, that, that information, that, that like media or, or people will trick you and, and just kind of immunizing kids effectively against that I think early on would be a very good thing to do. Basically just teach kids like don't be a little, be skeptical about what you're told. Uh, it, may, it may be true, it may not be true, or it may be that, that often it's a, there's a certain percentage chance that it is true and you want to consider the, the evidence, uh, you know, weigh the evidence to decide what is the probability that a certain thing is true or not true. And then, when, obviously, when, when you hear more evidence, then you change the probabilities. Um, I mean, generally, like, I, I believe in the sort of physics approach to uh, thinking, um, which is that you, 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 you're, always like ha you're always weighing the probabilities that something is true or not true, or that there may be a third explanation, um, and, uh, and be very open to new facts changing your mind. So. that helps to promote like true journalism through anything, I'd be happy, would mean everything. Well, thank you. I, well, I, th I think, I, I actually think that, that, that what we want to move to is, is really um, systems like X and other social media platforms too, if, if, uh, hopefully, uh, where you really have the, the sum of the voice of the people. Um, you know, in, in times past, we didn't have the technology for this, so the only way to learn news was for it to be, to be filtered through a small number of news organizations and then to be uh, printed in newspapers or broadcast. There wasn't really any way that people, that, that, that people could speak to each other or communicate with, with each other, but now there is. So if, if, because people can be online and, and I, I'm a big believer in sort of citizen journalism um, and, and, and actually being way better, way better than, because you see like, um, at first, citizen journalism may sound like, well, isn't that, isn't that, doesn't that mean just a whole bunch of amateurs are doing journalism? No, actually, it's way better because if you have actual experts in the field saying things, um, that's way better than a journalist. Um, if you have a people who are actually at the event live, I mean, look at, say, the, the, att the attempted assassination of President Trump, where people are actually at the event live, video, people are reporting it. it that, that's the kind of thing that is actually 
far better information than, uh, than filtering it through a, sm a small number of publications, which ends up being controlled by maybe five editors in chief. There's like five people that control all the, you know, the news. Um, and uh, even though there are multiple newspapers, uh, it's, you know, New York Times, Wall Street Journal, Washington Post, you know, a few others, and, uh, and they decide what, what, what is newsworthy. But it, that should not be what, how, how it works. It should be the, the, the voice of the people, the cumulative voice of the people should decide what is newsworthy. Thank you. Uh, first off, I want to thank Nicole here. She's the one that's holding the mic. Um, really awesome. Um, I know you said you were a little uh, spectrum autistic. I mean, little, sure. Yes. So I, the only reason I say that is I really, out of every successful person I've ever seen, you are the one person that I can relate to the most. So I'm sorry if I'm all over the place a little bit. Um, I remember you had stated that you hate the fact that every single time you hire someone for their talent instead of their passion. So I want to be able to say the Galileo test, I passed, Xavier passed, um, Don Lemon passed, Dark test, SpaceX test, um, A12, I passed that one. Um, the 95 test, that's the year 95, what you did um, to be able to do Zip2. I've done that. Slave test, jobs, Steve Jobs test, uh, reality goodness test. The reality of actually doing something good instead of just talking bullshit yeah. out their ass. Exactly. Uh, the Reed Hoffman test, which he scoffed at you because you were going to be the first man to be able to put life on Mars, but it was going to be a turtle. So now he kind of is walking back on that. But anyways, you guys had, were good friends. Um, so I want to, uh, I, I would classify myself, the easiest way is PNS. Um, quantum engineer and my friend Brandon and my wife uh, Theo and Brandon is over there. Um, I, I want to give you my business card. Uh, okay. If you have five seconds. All five right. seconds. Well, we, we have to move on to, to questions. So it's either question, it's, it's, it's the, the, uh, just to be clear, the, 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 goal of, the goal of the questions is to ask questions that you think the, the public would be interested in hearing the answer to. To be clear, that is the, um, that's what we're after. Okay. So. You know, it's, it's you, you, you want to ask, like, well, you're, you're interested in, in a particular question, but probably um, th there's a lot of people in America and in Pennsylvania that, that are also interested in that question. And that, that, those, those are the kind of questions we're aiming for here. So, but, th but thank you. It is what built America. I was wondering if you can uh, bring, instead of going to Pittsburgh, to be able to bring to Bethlehem, to Lehigh Valley, to be able to bring that up again. Steel? Bethlehem Steel? Uh, sure, I'm built I'm, a, 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 the, the U.S. Sure. And I know you are looking between uh, at Pittsburgh. I was wondering if you can look at Lehigh Valley to be able to grow what was what made America great. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I, I think we do need um, a lot more uh, local production of steel. Um, and it's there's not enough steel made in America. That that is for sure. So yeah. So what, we, let's move. Uh, with the emergence of AI and robotics, you've talked a lot about a possible age of abundance. Yes. Uh, what are some of the steps that you believe should be uh, necessary to lay the foundation that it's a more of a utopia for humanity than a dystopia? And why you answer that, would you mind signing an unauthorized biography written by my six-year-old son and possibly a copy of my Hitchhiker's Guide to Galaxy? <laughs> um, Sure. If it's a first six-year-old, sure. Uh, um, so uh, the the biggest thing for development of AI is that it be uh, maximally truth-seeking, uh, which sounds like an obvious thing. But um, what, what I what I what I see being done with a lot of the major AI companies is is not not truth-seeking. Um, they're aiming to be politically correct, which means lying essentially. So um, you know the I think this is absolutely fundamental. Um, and uh, I mean, it's, like an example being, for example, when Google came out with, with Google Gemini, and you know, people asked it, which which is worse, uh, global thermonuclear war or misgender, misgendering Caitlyn Jenner? And it said misgendering Caitlyn Jenner. So, which even Caitlyn Jenner said uh, that is not correct. <laughs> uh, so that is a you know, that's an insane thing for an AI to say uh, because. Um, if you have some sort of omnipotent AI, it could conclude, uh, log like logic, logically, that the best way to avoid misgendering is for there to be no humans, because if no humans equals probability of misgendering equals zero. 
So you could get like some very dystopian outcomes if you do not have a maximally truth-seeking AI. I think that's very important. That's the reason for XAI. So <laughs> you, you can't have an AI built on a throne of lies. Hi, Mr. Busk. My name is Dave Cochran. I am so ecstatic to be here. I do have the uttermost respect for you, sir. Thank you. I'm going to try to keep, I wanted to bring in my sketchbooks. I'm an inventor. They would have been stacked this high, but I'm not here to pitch my ideas. I really want to know, are you going to play a part in the office once we get Trump in there and yes. do things and maybe incorporate the space program in other areas of the country? I tried to move to Florida. My mother's 90. I want to be part of it. I want to do it right here. And sure. I'll bring manufacturing here and the space program. Yeah. But I'd like to see you involved. That's for sure. Um, yes, I, I intend to um, uh, help. Uh, I, I intend to do a lot of work to improve government efficiency. So I, I, I believe this is a very doable, very achievable. So, like I said, it's it's, it's really like we, we need we need sensible regulations, but we, we can't have uh, insane regulations. I I mean when when I um, what looked it up, it, 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 I think there was something like 428 uh, agencies, that ex federal agencies that exist. Um, that's almost a, two, a, two agencies created per year since the founding of the country. So, yeah, yeah exactly. Not to mention the, the NGOs that, uh, what, what that, what's weird about a lot of these NGOs is they're actually funded by the government. So it's like, it's a government-funded, non-governmental organization, which is like, it just ends up being a self-licking ice cream cone. You know, it's like bizarre. Um, then how do you shut it off, you know? Um, you have to shut it off at the government level. Um, so, yeah, I, th I think there's, I, I do intend to, um, it, um, if I'm, it, it, assuming the pr President Trump is willing, and I think he is, uh, I intend to uh, play a significant role in, uh, you know, in, in, in making government efficient. Just, I'm quite, I tend to be quite literal, you know. <laughs> so, so it's just, and, and I think, I think it, if it, would, it would free up, I think it just, it, it would allow for so many things to be done that, that, that are incredibly difficult to get done. Um, you know, uh, like, the, like the Boring Company, you know, was trying to d dig a tunnel, uh, just a road tunnel, uh, under the Colorado River in, in, in Texas, and has been waiting two years for, for a permit for a simple tunnel under a river. Because it's a federal river, it, it takes it's two years, and, and still no end in sight. Um, yeah, it's ridiculous. Can't get anything done. It's legal. So. Hey, on, the, on the subject of transparency, um, January 6th, there were two, uh, well, there's a single act of attempted act of violence were the two pipe bombs at the Democrat and Republican headquarters. The government released a picture of the pipe bomber sitting on a bench talking on a cell phone. It was time stamped. Uh, we know there's video cameras probably every five feet in D.C. Right. Why haven't they announced who the pipe bomber is? Um, well, maybe he's a federal employee. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Maybe. It's clear on Twitter, <laughs> some, de some detectives on Twitter, I think, were pretty clear that it was obvious who it was. Well, can't, they, can't they just tell the truth? Yeah, I mean, the, well, I think if President Trump is elected, we're, we're going to get to the bottom of a lot of these things, you know. So, I, I think it's going to be like ma massive data dump and, uh, and, and then have at it. Take a look at all the information, you know. So, yeah, so, I mean, maybe there's an innocent... Maybe, maybe there's an innocent explanation, maybe there isn't. Uh, let's find out. Hi, Elon. I know you're a bit busy, but would you, were you to start another company, what would it be? Would it have anything to do with helping more schools be like Astronova? And what is the future of Astronova? Um, well, I, I have to say, I'm not chomping at the bit to start another company. Um, <laughs> I, I have 17 jobs, and, uh, and, and, and then another one, I suppose, with the, the Department of Government Efficiency. Um, although I think... Improving government efficiency will be really helpful in advancing space and, and, and a bunch of other things, and, and just freeing you know people around the country to, to you know do what they want to do. Um, I think from an, as far as education is going, I, I think actually AI is going to potentially be a very good uh, educator, you know, because the, the AI basically will know all the facts and is infinitely patient and can move as fast as you'd like. Um, and I think it's there's a lot, lot of opportunity for for um, AI teachers to be, to be extremely, extremely good. So, thanks. Elon, thanks for all you do, and congratulations on getting Booster 12 back to the Megazilla. Thank you. Yeah. 
Uh, the SpaceX team is just inc is, is an incredibly talented team. I, it's an honor to work with them. Yeah. Uh, very impressive. And relating to X, would it be possible to train XAI on federal, state, and local regulations and financial data so that the citizen journalists can investigate and analyze all the finances and all the laws and regulations so that they can help identify the discrepancies that exist? Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with that. So. I mean, there, there is this fundamental challenge that, that happens, at, which is that laws and rules and regulations are immortal. And so every year, there's more rules, regulations, and laws, and they don't die because they're immortal. But we are, we are humans, we are immortal, we do die. So that you get this accumulation over time. In the, historically, what has caused a reset of the laws and regulations has been war. Um, now, we'd like to ideally avoid war, um, but we still need this, this massive reset of regulations um, and reduction of regulations, ideally without the forcing function of war. Um, but it, but it, is, it is an interesting thing that um, the, the, the longer that there is peace and prosperity, uh, the more rules and regulations will accumulate until eventually everything's illegal. So that's why I, I think it is essential that we have uh, um, a very conscious effort to reduce the laws and regulations um, or Eventually, no one will be allowed to do anything. Yeah. Hey, Elon, I'm Lucas, and uh, I have a question for you. What's the best advice for your children? <laughs> best advice for the kids? Well, um, my, generally, my advice is just to try to be as useful as possible to society. Um, you know, be a good person and, 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 and just try to be, try to, you know, give more than you take. You know, that's a big deal. Yeah. Hi, Elon. I'm uh, curious with the explosion of AI and ML, um, what your thoughts are on reforming the Nuclear Regulatory Commission so that we can provide all the electricity needs, not only for hyperscalers, AI and ML, but also to make electricity more affordable for citizens? Yeah, I, I, in fact, I, I think that the, the dangers of, of nuclear power are greatly overstated. Um, you know, so I, I think that we, we should... You know, especially with the latest latest technologies, I mean, you can you can actually make uh, a nuclear reactor where it is literally impossible to melt it down if you tried to melt it down. Like if your goal was to melt down this nuclear reactor, the new designs you can't, you will not succeed. You know, you can go in there with a flamethrower and a whatever doesn't matter, um, and bomb, you bomb the place doesn't matter. It's still not going to melt down. So if you if you're in a situation like that with you know with advanced nuclear reactors, what then there shouldn't be any regulatory uh, issues with that. Because what really matters is the safety of the public. Um, so I think that there should be significant reform on the nuclear front. Mr. Musk, my name is Dave. Excuse the patch. I had Mohs surgery a couple of days ago. It's super embarrassing. But <laughs> it took a lot to get up here with that. Um, I integrate AI into businesses, and we have to use OpenAI right now because okay. they're the only API. And so we have to train it like crazy to get it not to do woke things. Um, hoping that Grok has an, an API soon. It will um, actually. We'll be re releasing the API very soon. Oh, awesome. Okay, yeah. great. My cyber truck drove me here this evening, my son and I, so thank you for that product. And um, my question is Space Force. I'm assuming there's been some discussions with President Trump about Space Force, and I'm just curious if he does win. I, obviously, Doge, yes, yes. awesome. But Indeed. secondly, what do you think Space Force might look like in 10 years? Well, I, I think Space Force should really aim, aim higher. Um, you know, I think for, when the public hears Space Force, you sort of think Star Trek, Starfleet Academy. You, you don't, you don't think let's make a slightly better spy satellite. You know, that's th that, that. But but the way that Space Force is interpreted by the military current, currently is let's make a slightly better spy spy satellite. Like that's like five percent better. I'm like, no, that's not what people want. People want Starfleet Academy. You know, yeah. You know, we, we, we want the Star Trek Enterprise. You know, um, and uh, that's the that's what people want. The, a real a space force where it's like we're actually in space, you know. Um, so that's what I mean. Like we, we want to aim to have like a permanently crewed uh, base on the moon. We want to have, build a city on Mars. We want to be exploring the, the moons of Jupiter, the, the asteroid belt, the entire solar system, you know. And it, uh, you know, if, and if, 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 if you if you decide that you want to go to Mars, you should be able to go to Mars. You know, that's that that would be super exciting. Um, be a, a real spacefaring civilization would be fantastic. 
Yeah. Hi, Elon. You've spoken about the challenge of falling global birth rates and American birth rates. Is that something you've spoken to Donald Trump about? And uh, it seems like the richer we get, the worse it gets, and you can't really pay people to have more. Nothing seems to work. What ideas do you have for that? And is that something that you have spoken to him about? Thank you. I, I have mentioned it to him. Um, and it is, it is a quandary. Like, as you, you know, if you look at the sort of the rise and fall of civilizations, you realize that actually what ended up, what ended most civilizations was a low birth rate. Um, that is, uh, they just, an, an extended period of prosperity uh, seems to cause birth rates to plummet. Um, and somewhat, it's somewhat counterintuitive. When a society is under stress, birth rates increase. So if you look at, say, uh, ancient Rome, the birth rates were super high when they were fighting the Carthaginians, and, and, and Rome's very, very life was at stake. Birth rates were all-time high. Uh, after they defeated Carthage and, and ruled the Mediterranean, uh, the birth rates plummeted, um, and to such a degree that uh, Julius Caesar even tried to pass uh, you know, laws like in 50 BC or something like that to give an incentive for uh, any Roman citizen that would have a second or third child. So they were having birth rate issues in 50 BC, which is pretty wild. Um, and the, in, and, and that's, that, that was also true of, of really basically every, every civilization throughout history. So it's how do you avoid this uh, birth rate collapse, the trap of, it's a sort of prosperity trap. Um, I don't have a great answer for that, except, except I think if we can at least bring it to conscious awareness um, that we need to continue as a civilization, like no humans, no humanity. Um, and at least it's, it's a topic of conversation. It's like, hey, it's something we should do something about. Um, and, and we definitely want to get rid of this ridiculous notion that there are too many humans on Earth. Um, this is false. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of people who think that uh, the, the environment can't sustain this number of humans. It's totally untrue. We, we could double the population of Earth and still not have a significant environmental impact. So, you know, it's it, it, like if you could fit all of the humans um, on one floor in the city of New York. Um, so that's th like. Eight billion humans sounds like a lot, but actually, you know, if, if you're, say, take, if, in, if you're in an airplane and you're going from here to LA or wherever, and you look down, how often do you see a human? You know, if your goal was to drop a ball on a human while flying from, <laughs> from here to LA, you'd have a hard time. So the, the actual density of humans is very low, um, and, and, and Earth is capable of, of easily having uh, far more humans, and should, in my opinion. So. Hi, Elon. It's an honor to speak with you, and uh, I just want to personally thank you for buying uh, Twitter and saving free speech. You're welcome. <clears throat> so a couple months ago, uh, I was tired of being a keyboard warrior. I signed up to be a Trump Force 47 captain. Great. And I've knocked over 200 doors just trying to get people to get out and vote for uh, president. Great. Thank you. That's, so, it's, it's, that's super important. I mean, they, they, you know, as was was asked to me at the beginning of this talk, you know, why am I so involved in politics this time? It's because I think this time it's a fork in the road, um, and it's a. Uh, I think I think frankly I think we're doomed. If if Trump doesn't win, I think we're doomed. I think we're it's we're in the doom loop at that point. So, so he's, he's got to win, and and and, and I, I think for those who are in uh, areas that are you know sort of normally it's like deep blue areas, um, I if 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 you if. If you think you won't get assaulted, to, uh, tr put, put a Trump Vance sign on your lawn. Um, it, I, I mean, a, a lot of it is, is like people are like, it, they need social proof. They need, they need evidence that, that, other than, that they're not alone. And so probably a lot of people in these like nominally blue areas would actually vote for Trump if they thought someone else was voting for Trump too. Um, and so if you just put the, the sign on the lawn and, and be sort of loud and proud, then I think people will be like, you know what? I think I'll vote for Trump, too. So uh, my, I have a rhetorical question. Can you buy Disney and fire David Muir? <laughs> <laughs> now, that's a real interesting idea. So DEI has become a cancer. 
in our corporations. It really has. Uh, and I was wondering if there's anything realistically that the federal government can do or the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission to put a stop to this. Yeah, I think they should, the, the government should be actively saying that it is illegal to discriminate on the basis of, of race, gender, or any, anything else other than merit. It is illegal. That's, that's, it's not right. It's, it's, you know, it's not morally right, it's not legally right, and it doesn't matter who you're discriminating against. The point is not to have discrimination, but a, a, a different type of discrimination. The point is to not have discrimination. That's the whole idea. Yeah. Good evening, Elon. First of all, thank you for all you're doing, and thank you for being you. Um, in the, well, it's good. I appreciate the kind words. Thank you. Um, in the book, All the Glitters, the mystery behind the glitter conspiracies is revealed, and uh, the details of Mission X is exposed, where SpaceX is utilized to deposit a layer of glitter above the atmosphere, which deflects the red and infrared light away and cools the planet. My understanding is that this is sort of being kept secret because you don't want environmentalists or other people to come in and regulate and stop it from happening. Why isn't the public being made aware that it is essential that Donald Trump be elected for this to happen because Trump will not have to ask permission to save the planet, he'll just do it. And I'm just wondering if you feel the same sentiment, and then there's also been some rumors on the internet that you're going to not only do this, but then you're going to use it and charge the other countries of the world to support it. You're going to lower the deficit and other sorts of income, and there'll be no more wars between electric vehicles and oil fossil fuels. So why won't you tell people, elect Trump, and this will happen because if it's anybody but Trump, regulations or, yeah. you know, it only takes one person to complain and it won't happen. Um, well, I, I think it's, it's for sure true that we, when, we've, when we've got so many regulatory agencies um, and, and there are so many rules and regulations, I mean, like basically Washington DC is like, is like a, a sea of brake pedals. Like everyone's got a brake pedal, but nobody's got an accelerator. Um, we're going to add some accelerators. Uh, so, because all, all they want to do in D.C. is stop anything. Um, you know, so, you know, it's just a sea of, I, call, I just call it a sea of brake pedals. Like, brake pedals in all directions. Um, and how can you make progress if you've got a sea of brake pedals? It's not possible. So, we're, we're going to get rid of some, some, a bunch of the brake pedals and, and add accelerators. <laughs> I, my question was, uh, how do we stop the steal? And is there a way to have a database on X where we can track all the votes? We all send our votes to you to track it, and then we can tell who wins? Or is so much, even down in Georgia right now, they're already flipping votes on the machines. And how do we stop the steal? Well, I recommend posting you know, any evidence that you have for, for voting uh, fraud or irregularities or causes of, for, for concern. Just post, post it on the X platform, um, and then people can you know, support it or say, well, you know, either support it or debunk it, one of the two. Um, but, I mean, I, I do think there's, there's generally an, an issue that we have, a fundamental issue, which is in, in, unless we have voter ID um, and, you know, like, I, I, my, my, my opinion is we should have no, and I, I say this as a technologist who likes technology and I like computers, but we should not have computers do voting tabulation at all. Um, it, it's, it's, far, it's far too easy to hack a computer. I know how to hack a computer. Um, so, uh, you know, and government software is the easiest thing to hack. So it's not the best software. So uh, we should, in my opinion, we should have paper ballots only. It should be in-person voting with ID. End of story. Hi, Elon. Thank you for everything you do. Feel free to answer this question in three words. Some people claim that you're hurting Tesla's brand and sales by sporting Trump. What do you say to those people? <laughs> well, uh, I mean, you know, Tesla sales are actually doing great. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we <laughs> we're hitting all-time highs, so I, I think 
you know, really people care about the quality of a product uh, and, and as opposed to the, you know, whether they agree or disagree with the CEO's views. I mean, the CEO of any given company is going to have political views. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, what matters is that Tesla makes a great product and uh, people like buying great products. Um, so that's it. Hello. Hi. Hey, thanks, for, uh, thanks for coming and being here. Uh, I think I understand your vision for challenging the existing cell phone syndicate, but I want to know when the X phone is coming up. Man, I sure hope we don't have to make a phone. That's a real, that's a, big, that's a lot of work. Um, I mean, if, if, you know, if, if there's like, I mean, so, yeah, well, the idea of making a phone makes me want to die. Um, so, but if, if, if we have to make a phone, we will, but, but we will aspire not to make a phone. Um, you know, I, I do think the, the, that, uh, you, know, the, you know, the various companies and, you know, Apple and Google, Android and whatnot, you know, they need to make sure they don't have a heavy hand in like the app store and whatnot, or they, they, will, they will create a forcing function for there to be a competitor. Um, so, um, but man, I sure, the idea of, I, I dread the idea of making a phone, um, but it, if, 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 if that turns out to be necessary, we'll do it, but hopefully it is not necessary. Um, yeah, so, all right. Hey, Elon. Uh, first things first is that uh, J-Cal is on my cap table. All right. Um, Great. And um, my question is, I grew up in Spain, right near where uh, your brother got mari uh, married. Oh, cool. And um, in Ampudias. And comparing cities back home to cities here, it's like, incomparable. How does one fix, you know, I go to the our great city of Philadelphia. How does one fix the problem of people living on the streets? Um, it's not talked about enough. It isn't. Uh, no, I agree. I go to Kensington a lot, and it, that's just, it is such a horrible sight seeing yep. these poor people. At what point do you have the freedom to slowly kill yourself like that on the streets, um, and how do you fix that? Well, I think, I think the, the, there's not an easy answer to that. Um, but I think you cannot have open-air drug bazaars, um, because obviously that's going to be a magnet. Um, and, and uh, you know, while, you know, like most people can resist the lure of, of uh, you know, drugs, some people cannot. And, um, you know, they, you just cannot ha have, let, ha let, let there be easy access to drugs and have it just be open, oh, they're on the street. The, 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 then there are also situations where somebody is, like, just fundamentally uh, mentally ill. Like, not a little bit, you know. Um, like, I mean, mentally ill to, in, in a dangerous way. Um, dangerous to others. And, and, and I think if, if somebody is mentally, like incurably mentally ill and a danger to others, they, they, we need to have some kind of asylum for them. It, 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 there's, there's no, because the other, you know, it has to be done. The, the, the word homeless is a misnomer. Um, like, because homeless implies, sounds like someone who got a little behind on their mortgage payments, and if they just got a job offer, they'd be back on their feet. That does not describe the people in Kensington, okay? <laughs> At all. <laughs> Um, so, if, 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 if the issue is, one, like, if, if, if there's basically, if they're violent drug zombies, um, they, they must be taken off the streets, um, and they want to go willingly, they, there's, so there's no choice. Now, now I, I, I'm a big believer in empathy. I think we should have empathy, we should have empathy for, for, for our fellow human beings. Um, but, but what I see on the left is, what, is, is a lot of shallow empathy. Um, sort of, sort of empathy that's skin deep, essentially. Uh, very thin empathy. They have empathy for what they term homeless people when they're actually violent drug zombies, but they lack empathy for the victims of the violent drug zombies. And so that it's, they, we, we, sh we should have deep empathy for for everyone, not shallow empathy. De have empathy, ha have empathy for the victims of the criminals, not just the criminals. Hi, Leon. Uh, my name is Hans Moyer. I, I brought some plans here to solve all our problems. I'm going to give them to this young okay. lady here, okay? Wow, okay. <laughs> I have some good news. The Washington Times, the uh, most conservative uh, voice in our capital, endorsed uh, Pres President Trump for another, another term, so that's good news. Great. My question today to you is when your children come to you and, you know, they ask you, why, why is so much war in our world? Uh, what do you answer them as far as, you know, where does peace begin? Well, I mean, the, the reality is actually, if you say, 
um, war at, at per capita, it's actually quite low. Um, so that it's, it's not that there's no war, it's just that you, we, we, we now hear about war anywhere at all. So, um, but if you compare where we are today versus, say, last century with World War II and World War I, where millions of people were dying per year, um, we, the, the, we actually have, on a global basis, it's actually very peaceful. Um, that, that is not to say that there aren't some terrible things happening somewhere. There are 8 billion people on Earth. So, um, and, and in fact, what, what the sort of legacy mainstream media tends to do is try to answer the question, what is the worst thing that happened on Earth today? That's generally what like, the newspaper tries to answer. What's the worst thing that happened on Earth? It's a big world. There's some pretty bad things. So, the, the, so the, actually, the reality is that, that the, there is only a small amount of war occurring in the world um, compared to the past. Uh, and um, now, now, historically, humans have had a lot of war, of course. Um, but I, I think, actually, for countries, say, like the United States, the issue is that we've had peace for such a long time that we are a victim of prosperity. Um, it's sort of, and this, when you have peace for such a long time, you have this accumulation of rules and regulations that, that binds society. That's why I call it this, the slow strangulation by overregulation is what happens uh, in peacetime and, and a, a dramatic decline in the birth rate. And we, you know, the, the decline in the birth rate, is, it's, it's not something we've ever evolved to react to. Like, if you said, um, like, that, that you, there was like a Thanos situation where somebody would snap their fingers and half of people would be dead. Be like, well, that's terrible. Well, that's actually what's happening with the birth rate. Yet there is no reaction. Why is there no reaction? At the end of the day, you still have half the people. Um, I mean, look at, say, uh, you know, uh, South Korea. Birth rate is one-third replacement. One-third. That means for, if you forward, fast forward to the future, two-thirds of, of South Korea is gone. Poof, gone. More than Thanos. Why is there no reaction? Why are we not reacting to the absence of children? We should, re we, we, we should have, in my opinion, just as strong a reaction to the absence of children as, as to, to the death of humans. Because in both cases, the people are gone. Uh, hey, Elon, how you doing? Um, great job saving Twitter from the woke mind virus. Um, and I don't know if you're a gamer, but- I am, uh, what, what gave it away? Because <laughs> I, I do post frequently on the subject. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Me too. I, love, I do actually love it. People ask me, like, what, what are your hobbies? I'm like, well, I hang, I, I, you know, I talk to my friends and family and I play video games. Yeah. Um, yeah I left my Diablo <laughs> 4 to come here. So. Yeah. Um, but the. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but the gaming industry uh, is starting to see some um, results too, of being a victim of the woke yeah, totally. virus. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Um, and so but, I was wondering. Uh, with with reef and flops like uh, Conquer, make video games great again. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with uh, recent flops like Concord and Dustborn, games are prioritizing pronouns and things like that instead That's of actual annoying. gameplay. Yeah. Um, so I was wondering, have you ever thought about making your own gaming studio and making an impact in the industry? You know, uh, if, if there's one thing I could say that that would be a fun thing to do, it would be to uh, start a gaming studio because um, I do I do actually intrinsically love video games. Um, and I think actually if you apply sort of AI to video games, you could really make it just some incredible, make, make incredible video games. Um, so yeah, I think just generally for, co for, for content, in, you know, it, it, the, pr the problem with like the sort of DEI and the woke mind virus is that it, it kills the art. You know, it, it, it's just a, like as soon as, when, when you can see something that is forcibly imposed uh, on the story and it's, it's discordant, it destroys the art. And, 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 and now you, you, it's hard to enjoy the story. It kicks you out of the story because you, you can just feel that you're being lectured. And movies and TV and all yeah. that kind of stuff. It's like, let me just enjoy my video games. Man. Exactly. <laughs> I know, come on. <laughs> Not video games, too. <laughs> all right. Hi, Elon. Um, as a child of science fiction and being raised on Asimov and the grandeur and the beauty that came through his stories, I'm, I'm teaching my daughter the same thing. She's six years old. Yeah. And we've had conversations watching all of your rocket launches. And she's asked me, when can we go for a walk on the moon? So I have to ask, what's a realistic timeline for me to take my wife and my daughter to the moon and go for a walk? Well, that's a great, great question. Um, well, with, with our, our goal with Starship is to enable um, anyone to go to the moon or Mars or elsewhere if they want to. Um, and I think that is actually 
uh, genuinely possible with a, a fully reusable rocket. You know, the, the fundamental breakthrough that's needed for, to make life multiplanetary and for us to be a space-bearing civilization uh, is full and rapid reusability, which is what we have for every other form of transport. You know, we've got, you know, our cars are reusable, our planes are reusable, bicycles, horses, they're all reusable. Um, but, but rockets historically have not been reusable, they've been single use. Um, and, and that means you've got to have a whole new rocket every time you fly, which obviously makes it extremely expensive. Um, but with Starship, we are close to achieving full and rapid reusability. Um, and, and, and that then uh, drops the, 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 the cost of, of, of space travel by literally 10,000%. Like, the, no, no exaggeration. It's t like 10,000% improvement. It's insane. Well, it's, it's the difference between, you know, if you, if you have to refuel your car or get a new car. What's that? That's a really big cost difference. You know, and imagine, and, and the current the situation historically with rockets is like if you went on a journey, if, if it was a car, you'd have to have a, you'd, ha, you'd have to get a car and then tow a smaller car behind you to leave the other car there and then come back in the little car. <laughs> that, that, that's, which is insane. You need, a, you know, a second car just for the return journey. So that, 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 that made, has made space insanely expensive. But once you can, once it's fully reusable, now you, it, it, the cost is simply whatever it takes to, to refill the rocket. That's it. And that's, that's a massive change. So, thanks. Hi, Elon. Um, my name is Amanda. I'm a single homeschooling mom of a beautiful daughter. I chose to do this because of the inefficient education being provided through this country's public school system. Yeah, I think our education system is messed up. I mean, this, they're just like indoctrinating kids with Absolutely. like crazy ideas. California alone gets approximately $23 billion in federal funding, which only accounts for 6 to 9% of funding for the state's K-12 through schools. Right. Yet they still have the lowest graduation rates of any state in the U.S. Yes. How can we better use our funding federally to make sure our students in public school receive a proper education that prepares them for the workforce without the misallocation of taxpayer federal funding that the students seem to not be benefiting from anyway. Well, I mean, if, if, we, may, if we make the funding contingent on student performance, then I think that would, that would be a difference. I mean, r right now there's no feedback loop. Um, so schools can be terrible, uh, teachers can be terrible, and nothing happens. And, and it doesn't matter if they're, there's, there's what, what the results are. Um, so there's, there's, if you have no feedback loop for improvement, if there's, no, if there's neither punishment nor reward, there's, there's, no, there's no reward for excellence and there's no punishment for failure, then you're going to have basically communism. Um, and, and uh, you know, then it's bread lines and ugly shoes. Um, so we don't want that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I met someone uh, a few months ago who was telling me he, how, he, how he grew up and, and he was, his father was an ambassador. And uh, he, he went to Hungary when it was still in, um, under communism. And he remembers going into a store and trying to buy something. And, and you had to basically beg the store clerk to allow you to buy something. Okay, he's like, I was like, um... <laughs> <laughs> it's like, please do me a favor and allow me to buy this thing. That's how crazy it gets. But if you've got no feedback loop, essentially the store clerk knows that they'll never get fired, doesn't matter what happens, and they could be great or they could be terrible, nothing happens. Um, then you get, you, you get the outcome you should expect, which is um, terrible results. Um, wh whatever you incent will happen. And, uh, and so we, we need to have an incentive for excellence, uh, where there's reward for excellence and there's punishment for failure. Um, that's it. Hi, Elon. My name is Finn, and I actually go to your alma mater, the Wharton School of Finance. All right. Um, and I serve as finance director of the UPenn College Republican. Shout out CRs. That's good. Shout out Penn CRs. Um, and I just want to ask you, um, I know like, this is the moment. This is, we're in Pennsylvania, and we need to reelect Donald J. Trump as U.S. president. Um, how do, you, how do you recommend I do my part in going about that, being a fearless leader on the campus that you were once a part of, right. but also navigating these layers and layers of just communists that kind of control every institution in this country? Well, I mean, I think just, um, well, with respect to the selection, like I said, I think being uh, loud and proud is, is a good idea. Like, wear a Trump t-shirt, put a sign on the lawn, you know, wear, wear the, I mean, like, 
wear a mega hat, you know, type of thing. I mean, honestly, it's like at this point, it's just like, yeah. And then if people confront you, say, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's how it goes. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, man. <laughs> but but like, like I said, I think if this, is, this really is a pivotal election, super big deal. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's really a difference between freedom and opportunity or oppress, oppression and, uh, you know, communism, essentially. That, that's what we're looking at. So it, I think this is, it, this is if, if Donald Trump is not elected, I think this is the last election. Yeah. Hey, Elon. Uh, <laughs> this is not planned, but uh, I'm also a current undergraduate um, studying business at the University of Pennsylvania, who, as a young man, really takes great inspiration uh, in your work and story. Earlier you mentioned that the government deficit is growing at an unparalleled rate and needs to be stopped through a separate department for efficiency. Given the fact that government spending is increasing and taxes are unlikely to get cut in a meaningful manner, how do you think the United States can best decrease our government deficit to increase or invest sorry, in the future of our generation? And secondly and more importantly, what advice do you have for young men today who are seeking to achieve their full potential? Thanks and go Quakers. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I really think we've got to cut government spending. This, well, let me put it this way. The, the, ultimately, there will be no choice but to cut government spending. Um, and, and when the government runs a deficit, that is a tax. Um, and it's a tax on people who, have, have, who are saving money. It's, it's a tax on people who least deserve it, really. Um, you know, because in, inflation, it, it just, it, so that everyone understands, the only, the, only, the only thing that causes inflation is government overspending. Because the checks never bounce. When the, when the federal government writes them, the checks never bounce. So, when, so government overspending is taxation. It, it's, it's just a pernicious form of taxation that shows up in the rising price of goods and services. So the, on, the only answer is to, is to, is to subst dramatically cut government spending and have it be efficient. You know, spend on, on what is uh, only what is necessary and, and spend it well. Um, that, that's, that's, that's the path to prosperity and, and, and and, and any other path leads to doom. So um, it's got to be done. Yeah. I mean, in terms of gen general advice, I'd say it's it's like try to be as useful and productive as possible. You know, um, I, I do think we have an over allocation of of really smart people in America in finance and uh, law. Um, so that I mean, that's both a, a, a compliment and a criticism. Um, that that we we have we, we should have more people, more smart people in in sort of manufacturing. Um, and basically pr producing goods and services um, than, than in finance and law. Um, I think we, we over allocate to finance and law in the US. Um, so, it, you know, like a, like a good test would be like you're on a desert island. Who do you want with you? A lawyer? Probably not. <laughs> so it's not to say that we don't have, we shouldn't have lawyers, but just we should maybe not have as many lawyers. Um, you know, and, and so, you, you know, I think if, if you, you, you want to say like, what would be a useful skill to have if you're stranded on a desert island? And uh, aim for that. Hey, Elon, uh, thanks very much for coming. And uh, thanks for everything you're doing for the human species. And I wanted to know what you think, like where you see humans uh, a thousand years from now, assuming there isn't a nuclear situation, and what you think about you know, the nuclear situation currently and non-proliferation. And you talk a lot about you know, at these events and in your interviews, you know, going to Mars in order to safeguard humanity. But there's a lot of things that can occur that could affect the whole solar system. So what, what do you plan to do about that as well? The whole solar system? <laughs> I mean, well, look, I think if, if we can just, if, I, I do think that there is an important threshold where if we're able to make uh, life multiplanetary, meaning like that you can get to the point on Mars where Mars can grow by itself even if the resupply shifts from Earth stop coming. That's the critical threshold where, we, where the probable lifespan of civilization is dramatically greater. Um, so it's, it's not enough just to go, go to Mars and have like a small base or something like that. You've got to actually have uh, enough resources on Mars that if re resupply shifts stop coming for any reason, and it could be that, that things on Earth ended with a bang or a whimper, and, and currently it's trending to end, uh, it's sort of tragic, uh, currently things are trending to end with a whimper in adult diapers uh, because of the lack of birth rate. So, uh, but as soon as we can make life multiplanetary, sustainably multiplanetary, the probable lifespan of, of civilization is dramatically greater. Um, and, and, and 
I think that's really the fundamental test, is, is can, we, can we get to that point before civilization collapses? Can we make life multiplanet, sustainably multiplanetary, before something happens on Earth to prevent that from occurring? And if we do, the future is exciting and bright. And Mars may one day come back and save Earth, just like America came back and saved Europe and saved the rest of the world. Three times last century. Three times. Three times America saved the world last century. And, and what, what, a, what a disaster would have been if, if, if America had not existed. Um, and one day, Mars may, may play that same role on Earth. Good evening, Mr. Musk. I just wanted to um, ask, as a citizen of the United States and the United Kingdom, if you could get Donald Trump to pressure the United Kingdom and the EU to get you into those summits, to get more American businesses into Europe and not to be so aggressive. Well, I think there's, there's some weird things going on in Europe. Um, and uh, there's, there's a lot of, I mean, if we, if, although you know, we've got a, quite a lot of bureaucracy here, but in Europe they've got country level bureaucracy and then they've got EU bureaucracy on top of that. You know, I mean, the EU headquarters in, in Brussels is a monument to bureaucracy. It's a really next level. Um, you know, and, and, and they don't, they, they, unlike America, they, they don't have a First Amendment. You don't actually have uh, freedom of speech in Europe. Um, so, you know, but we're kind of like a pretty rare situation having freedom of speech. So, you know, that, like this crazy stuff happening in, in, in the UK where, um, you know, people are getting uh, like two, three year prison sentences for Facebook posts. Yeah, like I'm like, I don't think I should go to, you know, visit visit Britain because I'm like they're gonna like drag out some tw you know tweet and say two years in prison for this tweet or something bullshit like that you know um, so anyway I think I think that's you know it's Trump elected we got, we can put a stop to that stuff and say like ah oh, no way no no <laughs> nope <laughs> no throwing people in prison for for random social media posts that's crazy yeah it's ha it's happened a lot. No, I mean, it's so crazy in Britain that they, were, that they, were, they actually re have re released convicted pedophiles in order to imprison people for making social media posts. Yeah. That is a real thing that happened. Insane. Yeah. Hi, Yuan. I'm a medical student. Um, unfortunately, uh, radical ideology, including gender-affirming surgery, chest feeding, as they call it, has uh, infiltrated our curriculum. Um, unfortunately, if you speak out That's against insane. this, yeah. um, there are grave consequences. I have to meet in private with like-minded individuals to discuss this. I'm worried about the health of our patients and our citizens, and more importantly, the general trust in the medical system. Yes. Um, as a society, how do we push out these ideologies, but also, um, but also, I guess, prevent, you know, speak out and have freedom of speech without facing the fear of retribution? Well, I like Trump, honestly. Um, the, 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 the problem is that, that the government institutions um, un, under the, you know, formerly liberal left um, are pushing for censorship, you know, under the guise of, of something being hate speech or being, the, the, their favorite word, disinformation. I find it hilarious when, you know, CNN was complaining and saying that I'm, I'm pushing disinformation. I'm like, are you kidding? CNN? Look in the mirror. <laughs> Should rename himself DNN, Disinformation News Network. <laughs> it's nonstop bullshit. Um, so uh, you know, but but it, obviously it should be um, okay to debate things. Um, you know, wor you know, words are not violence. Uh, there's a big difference, um, and and we need we need the sort of you need to be able to to speak your mind and, and say what you want without um, you know severe repercussions. But uh, but there is there is. A, I mean, it's, it's wild, but like prominent Democrats multiple times have said the Constitution is, is an obstacle. They, they want to get rid of the First Amendment, they, and, and they, they will if they can. Um, so, you know, it's insane. Um, you know, I, I, and I strongly believe, you know, with respect to, you know, any, any kind of gender surgeries, they should not, there should not be any permanent changes to children. This is crazy. Um, a, a child cannot consent. You know, it's like if, if you need to be 18 to have a tattoo, well then, I think you need to be 18 to have, you know, to be, you know, sterilized. At, at, at least, you need to be 21 to have alcohol. So this should, it, it should be illegal to uh, take actions of, uh, on, on children that, that permanently affect their future. And they may, su they may subsequently come to regret. Like, I believe in, in maximizing people's happiness. Um, but but a allowing a, a child to do something you know, crazy during 
their, their teenage years uh, that, permit, that affects them for the rest of their lives is not doing good for that child at all, you know? So <laughs> leave the kids alone. So, yeah. Hi, Mr. Musk. Uh, I'll keep it as short as possible. Uh, right now, I'm also a student at Penn, uh, and I was wondering what you think education and college in particular is the best and probably more importantly the worst at preparing people for the real world. Thank you. Um, well, I, I mean, I do think it's important to study, um, I, I think it's good to study a wide range of things. Um, I, I think you, you, it is important to study, uh, in, I think, engineering and physics so you understand how reality works. Um, I think it's also important to study history um, and, uh, you know, Literature. I mean, I, I, so, it's not, so it's not purely a matter of studying, you know, engineering and, and math and, and, and physics. But I think if, if you don't, I, I, if, if somebody does not study physics at all, you, you, then it's, it's hard to tell the difference between what is a real technology and what is witchcraft. So, you know, physics allows you to sort of distinguish between witchcraft and, and reality. Um, and, you know, you sort of learn, well, why does an airplane fly? Why does a microwave heat food? Um, you know, how, how do, why do these devices work? Um, how is your phone able to receive uh, information through the air, invisibly? Um, and, uh, you know, if you study physics and engineering, you get to understand these things. But I think it's also important to study, you know, history and uh, philosophy and literature. I, I, so I'd go, I'd go with a wide range of subjects, but, but, but make sure that, that uh, physics is in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, well, like I think if somebody is like the CEO of an airplane company, they should know how airplanes fly. Yeah, call me crazy. I mean, I, you know. Hi, Elon. Uh, I'm in college right now studying computer science, so I've taken a big interest in AI and specifically your work in it. You've talked a lot about AGI and how an omnipotent AI could make the decision to kill all humans to avoid misgendering them. Yes. As you know, the way LLMs work, large language models, is they just predict the next word that comes in a sequence. So how do you see it going from something like that to something that can think and make decisions with the power to do that? Well, I think that's, that's, that's happening. Um, Pretty quickly, so um, yeah. I mean, I I, I think once when when you distill any given field down into its first principles, it, like essentially, I, I think you can almost think of intelligence like a compression problem, where if like you, for for any given field, it can be physics or, or any field, you can distill things down to their most uh, basic axiomatic elements, um, the things that are extremely likely to be true, and then you can reason up from there. Uh, to reach a, a cogent conclusion. Um, I think if you apply that, that sort of uh, first principles compression to a field, and, and then you decompress it and contest the results against reality, then, then AI is capable of innovation and discovering new physics. But this is, this is a esoteric subject. <laughs> um, that's that's how, what, how humans have done it, essentially. Is, is, you know, phys physics has been about figuring out the formulas that define reality. Um, but you can also think of it as the, the compression or decompression, the compression or decompression formulas for reality. If you if you if you have a starting point and you run the physics formulas, uh, you will eventually get a reality like us. <laughs> Economics Hi. is a simple subject. Hi, Elon. My name is Liv Parado, and I am the designer of Asteroid, the zero G indicator for the Polaris Dawn crew. My question is: When are we going to send kids under the age of 18 to space? We need to have other generations to space to start a colony. We do, absolutely. Well, I think it should be, if, if Starship is ultimately successful, which I, I think it will be if it's not stopped by the government, um, then we'll, anyone who wants to go to the moon or Mars or elsewhere will be able to go, which includes kids and, and families and anyone who wants to, to go and, um, you know, kind of homestead on Mars, essentially, um, which I think would be very exciting. Um, it, it will not be, it will be, to be clear, going to Mars at first will be difficult and dangerous. So not, not a luxury expedition, um, but a difficult one, uh, much as uh, the creation of America was. Thank you. Yeah, I, think I, I think I could probably do a few more questions, and, and then we'll call it a night. Thank you. This is such an honor. Thank you so much, Mr. Merce. I want to thank you for everything you're doing, and God bless you and your family. Thank you. We're, we're talking about such amazing things, our future, but to bring everybody back to reality in 18 days. It's the decision on whether or not that future will happen. So we're in Pennsylvania, the battleground state, and there is an anxiety because 
They're saying that we're not going to have a count for a couple days. So we don't know exactly what to do. You had suggested using Twitter to show what we're seeing. If yeah. you could elaborate on that part of it. Yeah. I mean, so, so I mean, really, essentially, if you have any concerns uh, or you feel like there's anything inappropriate happening, then you should po definitely post it on the X platform um, so that people are aware of it. Yeah. Have all of our information. I personally would volunteer if who knows what's going to happen. If you need bodies for Chad counting, whatever had happened in the past, I would volunteer, and I would think everybody else in here would be offering. To all right. Well, thank you. Thank you. All right. Just so I'll just do two two more questions. So one more there and one more there. Okay. Uh, hi, Mr. Musk. I'm not able to vote yet, but I still enjoy educating myself about our political world. My question is, how can a young American prepare themselves and inspire others for a rapidly evolving political and social world? Well, I guess you, you want to, you want to, you what's the, f the future you want to build? Like, like um, you know, like, I guess a, a future where, I don't know, there's immense prosperity for all and, uh, and we're out there exploring the stars. I mean, that's something that I, I find, you know, really exciting. Um, reach for the stars, yeah, that's what I think. Yeah, so. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name's Brody. Uh, I'm a college Republican at JMU. Um, today's actually my 19th birthday. Uh, oh, happy, week, happy birthday. A week ago, I would not have thought that I would have the opportunity to talk to you. Um, I was just wondering, what advice would you give to a college freshman? And also, why, have, why hasn't Tesla bought Rivian? <laughs> um, it, well, I, I, wish them, I, wish, I wish Rivian the best. I hope they do, they do well. Um, they, it, I mean, the car industry is a very difficult industry. Uh, you know, there's, there's only two car companies, US car companies, that haven't gone bankrupt, and that's Ford and Tesla. Um, yeah. and, and Rivian's going to have a hard time. Uh, they, if they, they, if they have, like it's just insanely difficult to um, compete in the, in the car industry. Uh, so um, it, that is a hard problem, I have to say. Um, in fact, if it were not for not just one, but two technology discontinuities, uh, one being uh, electrification and the other being autonomy, I think Tesla could not succeed without solving both. Not just one, but both. So, All right, well, I'd like to thank everyone for coming. Uh, it's been uh, an honor. Uh, it's been an honor talking, and uh, and I just like to encourage everyone out there uh, to get you know go to just get everyone registered. We, we the shot clock is running out. We got until um, midnight on Monday. Get every friend, family member, strangers on the street, everyone you can find, get them registered to vote, and uh, let's win this election. Let's go.